Hi there, welcome back to the vlog. So today I want to go down into technology and specifically I want to go down into some old software. Sometimes what happens is you've got code that you know, looks quite professional on the front, but then when you look behind, you know, there's dragons. And you know, this is where I want to sort of cover some of this today. So the first thing I want to cover is uh, shutdown. Now, under Unix, there is a shutdown command, and as you may know, there's a version of uh, Unix called FreeBSD, which is sort of the underpinnings of the Mac OS system. So Mac OS inherits from this other open source code. As you can imagine, Apple then, because they make changes to it for their own use, they then open source that code as well. So you can have a look to see what the original was, plus what Apple has done with it. This is where we get to the shutdown.c source code. and. Uh, yeah, in order to explain what happened, we need to actually now go into some code quickly, and I, I promise I will keep this very, very light, but uh, I'll give you just enough that you understand what's funny about this code. So to truly understand what's going on here, um, before we dive into the code, I need to quickly explain something to you because it'll help you understand you know, the funniness behind this. So I'm gonna quickly start up Xcode. Okay, so what we've got here is a basic project and this basic project, let me just clear that, we don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, so what we've got here is a basic project and all it does is it starts here where it says main and it ends here and in the middle, literally the only thing it will do is print out to the log screen, hello world. Now, in C, there is something called a hash define. And the idea is, you know, you've got all of this stuff which is code, which is what is going to run when the computer compiles this code, but you've got things up here that begin with hashes, and these are things telling the compiler what to do. So we can add things like, you know, hash define Bob1. And what this means is every time I say Bob, what I really mean is 1. I could also go, you know, hash define bill and then put something I don't know uh, Green Bay Packers so what we've got here is every time I say the word bill what I really mean is Green Bay Packers once you understand this there are things you can do down in the code where you can say like if oops, if defined Bob then we're gonna run some code in here so run code so everywhere between this hash if def and this end if will run that code if this up here has been created. Now, I could also then do, you know, uh, let's say if Bob was created, run this code, hash else, run code when there's no Bob. Oops, can't spell. So now if I was to comment this out, it will run this code instead of this code. Now, there's something funny. If we take all that stuff back out, there's something funny that we can do here. Um, I don't suggest that you ever do this. So let's try something here. Imagine we've got like int a equals five, and then we've got integer b equals 10. So if I wrote an if, if A is less than B, run this code, All right? So whatever's in here, it would run it once and then continue down to the end. If, however, you do something really nasty like this, so, you know, every time we say the word if, what we really mean is while, what will now happen is this effectively looks like this at runtime, which means instead of it going through once, it will go through over and over and over. It is one of those things that, you know, C programmers, if they leave their employers in a, uh, a bad situation, they'll quite often stick something stupid like this in the code. And, you know, it all of a sudden means that the next time somebody goes to compile the code, everything that was previously working now all of a sudden does not work. I mean, it's normally pretty easy to find this stuff once you realize what's going on, but, yeah, there are a lot of people that uh, do stupidity like this. And uh, yeah, so I would never actually suggest that you do it yourself. So now that you understand this, we'll jump over to Apple's code. 
Okay, so if I open up a terminal window and I do manual shutdown, I get the manual telling me how the shutdown command works under Mac OS. And on the left here, what we've got is the actual source code for that command over there. And what we have is this interesting looking if def, and it's looking for something called underscore underscore apple underscore underscore. And if apple has been created, then we're going to declare something called log and execute reboot or halt. Otherwise, void die you gravy sucking pig dog. Now, <laughs> this here is the original code that is in the Unix shutdown command. And, you know, it has been brought over because Unix is open source and Apple is using their code. Well, they're, you know, not so uncouth that they don't want to call die you gravy sucking pig dog. So what they do is they compile saying, well, we're going to call it log and exec reboot or halt. So if we now go looking for So here we are, we're in the middle of a loop where it's going through doing stuff and we get to this bit here, we say, you know, if this is Apple, we're going to call this log and exec reboot or halt. Otherwise we're gonna call die you gravy sucking pig dog. <laughs> so if we now go down again, we actually get to the code itself. So we'll see here void, which just basically means this function returns nothing. If this is Apple, compiling it, this is called log and exec reboot or halt, otherwise the original name was die you gravy sucking pig dog. And there, starting from this bracket down, is the code that it's going to run. So as you can see here, a piece of code that a lot of people are going to run, whether it be in scripts or whatever, uh, you know, everybody thinks that it's written all professionally and stuff like that, but no, under the hood there's this thing called die you gravy sucking pig dog. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Now I'm going to show you some other Unix code, but this is a lot worse than what we first just looked at. And in this one, I mean, you know, you know, let's just dive into it. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the netcat uh, or nc command, and you know we can actually see this here. So if I do man uh, nc. So this basically allows you to do port scanning and, and stuff like this. So uh, long story short, here is the source code. Yes, yeah, so almost immediately what you'll notice is that there are you know, references to poop in places like this. And also, you know, somebody is saying whoever came up with this should be taken out and shot. Yeah. And then we've got host poop, port poop, get port poop. And a little bit further down, we have a uh, catch here. And you know, literally, they just punt it, literally. Uh, yeah, like somebody here wasn't uh, too worried about what was what was going on. So here they're talking about you know cross-checking host poop that they have so far against new get host by function info and holler about mismatches. Perhaps gratuitous, but it can't help to point out when somebody's DNS is and then the F word. And then further on down, we have this uh, in, in the function get host poop. There is this uh, really long diatribe, and it's the, the guy basically says he really wants to strangle the Twitter who dreamed up all of these sock addresses and host entry abstractions and enforce them to be incompatible with each other. Uh, you know, the, the guy's um, you know, pretty frustrated. Then he continues, what an absolutely horrible paradigm, and to think of all the people who have been wasting a significant amount of time fighting with this stupid deliberate obfuscation over the last 10 years. Now, this was written a couple of years bef uh, before now, so, you know, this, this stuff getting on for a couple of decades old and then you know this guy's talking about like you know how he likes to write stuff and uh, you know how the compiler stays out of your face and sheep and nervous and yeah like it's, it's absolutely uh, horrific stuff when you look at what's going on down in here so there's lots of swearing in this and lots of rude words and things but um, yeah you know, this is what sometimes happens under the hood you think that you're running a piece of code that is tried true and tested and yes it is I mean you know this stuff it works um, you know it it ships in the final product as we can see here but under the hood, when you look at the source code, it's just like, whoa, what happened for us to end up here? Okay, so hopefully you found that one fun. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe and speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.